Hello everyone and welcome to my channel and today we're going to be painting up the Stormcast Eternals from the Dominion box set and I'm going to start off with the Vindicators and Annihilators because they are pretty much the same type of model. They don't have capes. Assembly is pretty straightforward except there are a few instances where I'm going to have to tie them down with a wire to compress them and then apply glue after the fact. It's like I only had to do this like two or three times, no big issue. And then I use general purpose gray car primer in order to prime all the models. And I also kept the shields separate for purposes of painting, ease of access. Now here's something else. I wanted to try to make some better bases, so I spent around two days, there's two days time between me priming them and getting to this point of making these bases. I had to make them up in Blender and then print them. That took around two days time, maybe around five or so hours to print because of the size of the bases. I can only print four at a time on the base and there's 13 models so that brought it up to around four prints it only took 20 minutes but it's like a half hour to clean prep and do all that stuff to reset up again so so far i probably spent around an hour or around yeah, around five or six hours total on this project by now with the 3d printing and now on to painting now with Dark Reaper, Dawnstone, Administrative Grey, Drakenhof Nightshade, Contrast, Iliad, I I I this yellow color, and Lamian Medium, we're going to paint the bases first. We're going to apply Dark Reaper all over, and then once that dries, we're going to dry brush Dawnstone all over. Then we're going to dry brush Administrative Grey all over. A lighter dry brush though. And then we're going to take Drakenhof Nightshade mixed one to one with Lamian Medium. And then we're going to apply this all over the stone to add a bluish hue, to tone some things down, bring things together, and add depth. And then we're going to take Contrast e Iadin Yellow mixed with just a little bit of Lamian Medium to help it flow better. And we're just going to apply it onto the. Uh, I don't know what the word is, but basically there are some stones in here that have that are part of symbols and stuff. And so I applied it on them in order to differentiate. Now for this project, I was going to try some new stuff, so I was going to go heavily into translucent, which requires me to have a lot of good undercoating so that the translucent layers up top will have highlights and shadows n uh, normally, or created naturally. And so with Pallid Witch Flesh, and don't use this ink, I'll explain later, and White Scar, we're going to do, uh, we're going to basically paint the models up. And how it works is, uh, normally, I do the dark color first from the underside and then the light color afterwards, but the light color normally uh, takes out all the shadow, and I didn't want to do that, so this time I started with the light color from the a top 45 degree angle, and then I added the dark color underneath. I don't recommend using this ink, it actually ruined this entire model set, these kits, which I only discovered later. I would have used a Magos Purple or something like that. Uh, from the contrast line for this and then once that is done I then take white scar and then I dry brush all over the model picking out the raised areas edges and the, all the little details and the little spikes and now with Liquitex acrylic ink burnt sienna transparent burnt sienna and Citadel rune fang steel air which is the only version of rune fang steel that's actually worth a dollar seven dollars and 99 cents actually and so I mix them together basically one to one just pure like that and then I apply it all over. Now what I've discovered is it naturally highlights and shades. The ink after being applied slightly separates from the steel and goes into the recesses and shadows. So basically with this mix you are laying your base coat, your highlight and your shadows all in one go. And I eventually discovered a slight issue. While I paint it you I won't notice it but I eventually come to notice that some parts look frosty, like a frosted, and I don't understand why. It's because somehow, I don't think it was in the primer, I really think it was in the purple ink, that, because it only shows up on the lower areas mostly, that the purple ink somehow like stippled and created like some sort of texture thing there, and really ruined the effect. So this will only really work on flat, solid planes, if it's like frosted or has a lot of texture on it, it's going to fail.
this is a huge demonstration of what went wrong with it like what the crap I have no idea how this happened I can only assume it's from the purple I that that's literally all I can think of I'm not sure if it was the primer but man that is horrible it pretty much ruined the models then you have on this side where it looks like with the purple didn't touch that it seems to have turned out fine in shades and highlights very well I tried to add a second coat to all the metal in order to maybe fix it, hopefully it did not. Uh, if it was ruined before, it was going to be ruined again. The only thing this did was make the gold even, like, thicker, fuller, darker. Alright, with Phalanthic, I'm not even going to pronounce that, this green-blue shade and carbon black and the Runefang steel, I tried to make a mix to make a bluish uh, dark steel color. However, I realized that it's mostly a green, not a blue. I have no idea how I messed that up. So I had Dragonhoff Nightshade into it, and the end result is green scales. Well, that sucks. So I took a trip to my local Michaels Arts and Crafts and to pick up just one Liquitex ink, uh, a blue color for the blue metal, and I failed and picked up a few other things. Well, tasks failed successfully. Or I would say that, but however, it turns out that a dark ink mixed with the silver lightens the color, but a light color mixed with the silver stays light. I don't know what I was thinking, so I got the wrong color, and now everything has a very bright blue to it. So with a one-to-one -one mix of that light blue color, I don't even want to bother pronouncing its name, and the silver, <laughs> I paint these light blue scales all over. I needed a darker blue. That was a mess up. So I mixed a little bit of black in and applied this slightly darker blue to the big round shields. Now with carbon black mixed now with the runefang steel, we're just gonna apply this to the blades of the weapons and to the hammerheads. And then with pallid witch flesh, we're gonna just apply this straight onto uh, symbols on the shoulder pads and on the shields. And then with the Liquitex Burnt Umber mixed with Pallid Witch Flesh and mixed with Lamian Medium, we're going to apply it onto their staff hilts where they grab. So this was too dark of a color, I should have mixed, I wanted to try mixing it, the inks with a paint, and then uh, helping it flow with Lamian Medium to I can keep up with this ink-like style, because it highlights naturally, but I really should have had a brighter or a different colored ink, uh, they're expensive so I don't really have that much to choose from. But when it mixed with the Pallid Witch Flesh I was basically able to create this leathery wash, it can bring out all the details. Oh, and I uh, mix in a little bit of carbon black with it as well to make it dark. And then with Mornfang Brown, I paint all the leather straps, the leather belts around them, and the scabbards. And also the, uh, how do I put this, like the joints between the metal as a leather color. And with Iron Breaker, I do a small dry brushing on the scales. And now with Rakarth Flesh, Evil Sun Scarlet, Dark Reaper, and Averland Sunset, we're going to paint a bunch of miscellaneous details. With Rakarth Flesh, we're going to paint all these, uh, like, strips, ribbons, and stuff that's on uh, some of the guys, uh, some of their spears, and, of course, the banner. And with Evil Sun Scarlet, we're going to paint uh, the heads of hair. I don't know what, what they're called, but there's two models that have this. Then with Averland Sunset, we're going to use this to pick out the yellow details on the banner. And then with Dark Reaper, we're going to paint the stones that several of them are stepping on. Now for a few more small details. Two of the models have this little fanny pack thing, so I use Steel Legion Drab just to apply a simple layer on it. Then I go back to my gold mix to touch some things up, and then I just apply it onto the gold lightning bolts that are on the Annihilators to... I, I just didn't like the blue, and it... Well, I mean, it looked good. And then finally I took some Iron Breaker and I painted the little belt buckle thing holders on their belts. 
I've been wanting to go back into oils to try them again because I've been tempted by some stuff I saw. So I'm going to try with this simple odorless paint thinner that I get from my local uh, Michaels Arts and Crafts and a quality, quality Winsor Newton Burnt Umber. So I'm going to, since I think these models are pretty much a failure anyway, I'm going to experiment on them even more. So I'm going to start with a very light wash and I'm going to apply it to the annihilators. Very light, it's very thin and diluted. And then I immediately uh, clean it up with a makeup sponge which apparently you can cut them into pieces with scissors and so you can use them to get into smaller spaces. I found that out. And so far it doesn't really look like much because I immediately applied a thin wash and then immediately took it off afterwards. So, eh. Then I took a very thick wash, much much thicker, and applied it all over and then I had to do something and I forgot about them and so the wash stayed on for like an hour and I feel like it adhered much better. And then I go with a makeup sponge and I try to remove it and I feel like this was a better uh, way. It baked in more, but you kind of want to use the smaller part, you cut the, what do you call it, the sponges down a little bit to fit into like their knees and their legs to get more details out. You don't want to wipe everything off, you just want to wipe stuff in small places. So cutting the sponges into smaller pieces works pretty well. Um, I think actually making it thick and letting it sit for an hour it did a much better job. And then I took the uh, wash again that was thick and I just applied it directly into certain areas just to add more depth. And I'm just calling it done there. There are some more details I could have done but I'm just saddened with the whole thing. It's like, it was rigged from the start. I don't know if it was the primer, I think it's the purple ink, just because of where the the worst effects were placed. Uh, it was sad, but it was a learning lesson. Uh, so thicker washes, letting it sit for a while, I can cut up the sponges, I learned that. I learned that the that mix of the Liquitex ink and the uh, Air Runefang Steel, like it highlighted, shaded, and did all the work in one pass. The only reason I did a second pass was because I wanted it darker but I could have just added more ink into the original mix to make it darker so there was no real need for that. And yeah. Ugh. Ugh. What could have been? Uh, it, it was just sad and depressing. Uh, at best rating I give it a 5 out of 10. I learned some stuff. The bases came out pretty well from uh, from the 3D print. Also, one note I'm gonna say, uh, be careful when gluing your resin prints onto bases with super glue. Something happened where it started to smoke next to my finger and it basically, the resin somehow mixed with the super glue and turned into a crystal onto one of my fingers and I had to rip it off and a part of my finger came off. So just FYI, wash your prints more and uh, be much more careful. If your prints and super gluing starts to smoke, chuck that out the window. Maybe you can use some gloves. So, uh, eh. Th this project was more of a learning experience. I am disappointed that I got screwed from the beginning because I really liked the shiny armor. And in some cases, yeah, I got really nice shiny armor, but, ugh, it hurt. Well, Ah, whatever. I'm going to put these on eBay at a discount. I just want them out of my sight. I'm so sad with them. But anyway, on to the next kit. So, like the video if you like the video. Share if you want to share it. Comment if you want to comment. And, uh, you'll see it soon. Or I'll see you again soon. Bye.